Hello everyone, this is Richard with the Modern Health Span newsletter. First a disclaimer, in this newsletter series we will share the latest research studies, news and events in the health span field that we have found interesting. It is a not a recommendation or medical advice. Now let's turn to the microbiome, which is currently a hot topic. We have over 100 trillion microbes in our body, which outnumber our human cells by 10 to 1. And the number of genes in all the microbes in one person's microbiome is 200 times the number of genes in the human genome. The microbiome is important for our health, so I'm excited to have been selected to participate in a research study, How Our Microbiome Balance Affects Our Health. The study is being run by a biotech company in Hong Kong, which was founded by a team from the Hong Kong Chinese University. This is the gut microbiome DNA test kit that they sent me. I've just filled in two surveys and returned my poop in a biohazard bag for the study. It seems results will be out in two weeks. I will let you know when I get the results back. We would like to offer our congratulations to Vittorio Sebastiano of Stanford University. He has just received the 2020 Glenn Foundation for Medical Research Breakthroughs in Gerontology Award. The big award is sponsored by the Glenn Foundation for Medical Research in collaboration with the American Federation for Aging Research and provides funding for research projects aimed at discoveries that address aging and health span. As described by the award page, Dr. Sebastiano's method, which is named Epigenetic Reprogramming of Aging, or ERA, paves the way to a novel groundbreaking translatable strategy for cell rejuvenation treatment. We are honoured to have had the opportunity to interview Dr. Sebastiano earlier on our channel where he explained ERA for us and our audience. ERA, ERA Epigenetic Reprogramming of Aging. ERA is based on the ideas of cellular reprogramming with the goal to promote epigenetic rejuvenation of adult cells, leaving their identity untouched. This new technology has been painted and is being implemented by Turn Biotechnologies, of which Dr. Sebastiano is co-founder and chair of the Scientific Advisory Board. The company is now developing partial cellular reprogramming techniques to reverse cellular aging. In case you haven't watched it, please find the link above on the screen. The first paper we're going to look at this week comes from a tweet by Dr. Sinclair and is about the effects of chronic aspirin use on colon cancer. The study was a longitudinal analysis of healthy participants to see the cancer suppression effects of aspirin. As it says here, colon cancer is the third most common worldwide and aspirin use reduces the colon cancer incidence. The authors took samples from 31 women who had taken part in a study that they had conducted 10 years previously, giving them longitudinal data for how the methylation in the colon had changed over time. Epigenetic changes, particularly DNA methylation, are one of the most common molecular alterations in human tumours, including colon cancer, and the changes specific to colon cancer can be detected as an early warning before any visible signs. The team took biopsies of the participants' colons, as well as looking at these specific markers, they looked at the DNA methylation age of the tissue using three clocks to measure the epi age of the cells as they, that they had extracted in the biopsies. The clocks that they used were the Horvath, Hanum, and the PhenoAge clock. We can see that the methylation changes on the CPG sites related to these clocks were significantly reduced in all three clocks for the users of aspirin in comparison to those who did not use it. In summary, they say that they found significant deceleration of all three clocks, reduced methylation levels and decelerated MH in the proximal colon, showing that regular aspirin use appeared to slow down the aging process in the colon. Here is a summary slide from the study showing that the aspirin users had a reduced risk of colon cancer because of the epigenetic changes. This sounds really interesting in the positive effects that they saw and in the use of epigenetic clocks as one of the outcomes measured. The second paper looks at mTORC1 activity in sarcopenia. Sarcopenia is the muscle wasting that happens as we get older. According to the Harvard Medical School, after age 30 we lose as much as 3% to 5% of our muscle mass per decade. Maintaining our muscle mass and strength is of key importance. mTORC1 stands for mTOR complex 1, which is the key form of mTOR that regulates growth in cells. Here is the abstract where the author lay out one of the key questions related to sarcopenia and one that I have been researching. mTORC1 promotes skeletal muscle growth 
but also drives aging. So based on this, is mTORC1 activation or suppression beneficial for skeletal muscle aging? The study looks at mice, and in some of these uses rapamycin to inhibit mTOR, and in others turns off one of the suppressor genes for mTOR so that the gene is overexpressed. They show that rapamycin is overwhelmingly but not entirely positive for aging mouse skeletal muscle, and that overexpressing mTOR actually induces early onset sarcopenia, showing that too much mTOR is not good for muscle growth. In the discussion section, the authors say, while traditional wisdom stemming from short-term models of muscle hypertrophy and atrophy dictate that antisarcopenic intervention should focus on boosting mTORC1 activity, evidence is mounting that efforts should focus on mTORC1 suppression, which is really a surprise to me. And in the final summary they say, these data establish mTORC1 hyperactivity as a bona fide hallmark of sarcopenia. Perhaps, as Dr. Kennedy said in our interview, the problem is that mTOR becomes overactive with age, and drugs like rapamycin help shut it down when it is not needed. I find this conclusion really interesting, and it seems to point towards a goal of suppressing mTOR most of the time, while potentially activating it after exercise. Next, in our event corner, we have two events to introduce this time. First, a Japan's Innovation for an Aging Society webinar which is hosted by Stanford University on November the 10th at 7 p.m. Pacific Time. The speaker for this event is Dr. Ikeno of Stanford University. Our next event is Healthy Longevity monthly webinars from November to December hosted by Professor Brian Kennedy in the National University of Singapore. The webinar series started from November the 5th and occurs every Thursday till December the 17th. If you missed the November the 5th webinar, there is still another five webinars coming. The speakers in November will be Paul Irving and Dr. Aubrey de Grey. The speakers in December haven't been revealed yet, but Professor Kennedy did mention in the previous webinar that Dr. Volta Longo will be one of their guests. You can find the registration links for both events in the description. Thank you all for watching. I hope that you found the video informative. Please do hit the thumbs up button, subscribe to our channel and hit the bell button for new video release notifications. It encourages us to continue to create more videos about anti-aging and extending healthy lifespan. Thank you so much for your kind support. I wish you all well and will speak to you again soon.